My name is Mark White, and um, I'm the, the national lead for the Productive Ward in Ireland. And um, my my other job, uh, as part of that, is I'm director of uh, nursing and midwifery plan and development in a small little corner of Ireland, in the southeast. And um, our my first interaction with the Productive Ward uh, was uh, in the context of being a director in the southeast, where we had some interaction with the NHSI in relation to the international fellowship scheme that they run, or the fellowship scheme that they run. It's, it's now international. And um, we were toying with the idea of sponsoring somebody in the area of improvement uh, to come uh, in our little region and do some um, improvement work. And that improvement work was centered around the, the, the uh, productive ward. So this fellow would go to the UK, learn a little bit about improvement and improvement science and, 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 and some, of the, uh, some of the detail in relation to, to, to metrics and come and introduce a productive ward in one southeast uh, corner of Ireland. But then it all went horribly wrong and it became nationalized uh, uh, when I, somebody overheard in the corridor what I was trying to do. Uh, so uh, we, we started a national project. And uh, uh, in true Irish style, it took a long time for us to actually, because we didn't believe anything they were saying in England, uh, like we do with everything in, in Ireland, it took us a, a long time to have a little bit of interaction between the NHSI and, our uh, and ourselves in relation to how this would work and uh, how we would uh, implement it in Ireland. And... Um, so uh, our second, this, the second thing we did was uh, we actually looked and, uh, and said, well, we have a great uh, opportunity here in Ireland to learn from the implementation in the UK uh, and to take the best out of the implementation in the UK and try and put a model in place in Ireland that would uh, learn from either the mistakes and the successes of, of, of some of the sites in, in uh, the UK. And uh, that led us to step three, which is really to design a, a robust implementation plan that was nationalized and systematic and that w wasn't sporadic and we wouldn't have islands of improvement, that we'd actually have a systematic approach uh, to, to implementation. So uh, learning from the experience of others um, is not ju wasn't just some of the interactions that we had with uh, our, our, our UK sites. We're also very lucky in the Republic in that we have uh, up in the north of the, uh, the country, the Northern Ireland, who had had experience with the productive ward since 2008, 2009. And some evaluations had been done in Scotland. Uh, some evaluations had been done in um, the Health and Social Trust in, in, in Belfast. And we also have the, the, the national uh, evaluations in, uh, around implementation from the NHSI and the National Nursing Research Unit in King's uh, in London. And uh, there were uh, quite valuable pieces of information that we, 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 we took. Um, and uh, we, we also, I also uh, at the time had some interaction with Skatuin, with Kyla Avis in, in, in Skatuin, who was trying to implement a national uh, productive war project in Canada. So um, we were quite advantaged in that we were taking our time and looking at, at how, the, how this could happen. And um, as part of that uh, process as well is um, I'm, I'm quite inquisitive by nature and I thought, well, it can't all be good news. Uh, it can't all be uh, sponsored uh, co collaborative uh, reports between the National Nursing Research Unit uh, and the NHSI. So we decided to do a, a, a full literature review. And um, so that literature review looked at uh, there's only 15 peer-reviewed papers about in relation to productive ward, um, and uh, but there are lots and lots. In fact, there's about uh, uh, 92, 93 anecdotal lived case studies about productive ward in the nursing press, so in the nursing times and the nursing standards, and and some of the various international nursing journals that where people would write maybe a, a little case review or an experience. So um, we looked at those and. Um, uh, we, we also uh, uh, noted that two of the peer review uh, journals were also by people from the research teams that were on the sponsored NHSI NNR uh, uh, team as well. So um, we took that into, in, into account. Um, so in terms of implementation and experience, there was about 29 papers that we used uh, in relation to developing an implementation uh, plan and, or, or messages in relation to implementation from the non-peer reviewed journals. Um, and um, 
we, we came up with an implementation, uh, you know, some key characteristics around implementation. Some of these are mentioned in the NHSI top tips, but some of them are gleaned from the lived experiences in the case studies that, uh, and some of the peer review journals. And um, for anybody who's been involved in, in implementing the productive ward here, this stuff, you'd say, God, yeah, we absolutely, yeah, we know this and, uh, and we need it. So it's in relation to people's experience of requiring appropriate training and support, making sure that there's proper project planning and, and uh, project management, making sure that there's leaders and, and the role of leadership, both from project leader to ward leaders, uh, um, and, uh, and also at a macro level, leadership in relation to driving this whole thing forward. Um, Corporate management and engagement and support, uh, making sure that it's not just a nursing thing, that it's, it's actually an organizational thing, um, uh, and that there's some sort of commitment in relation to finance and, and, and human resources uh, that are committed to the project. And the other thing is a little bit what we're doing here today, uh, engagement and uh, communication uh, about the message and, and, and getting through, and uh, ensuring that when we do choose ward leads and we do choose project leads in each of our, our sites, that they are uh, the type of, of, of leaders that are enabling and empowering. And, uh, and, and we designed that uh, model and we thought, well, that, that model is not just for, and it can be used for implementation in sites, site specific, but it also helps shape our national uh, project plan. And um, so our national project plan started to look a little bit like this. It was systematic, as in it was a whole Ireland approach. Um, that there was some financial support and it was grasped by nursing. So national n corporate nursing um, uh, took this on and drove this in, in Ireland and they provided the financial support and they provided the, the leadership and the vision uh, and momentum in relation to making sure that there are monthly reports in relation to all of the sites, uh, giving back information in relation to their activity, in relation to their improvements uh, and in relation to their plans for the following months and the modules as they work through this. Uh, so we had a real structured rollout plan. Um, we made sure that there was appropriate training and support. Uh, and um, in the, through our literature review, it was quite evident from the lived case studies that most of the sites and the interactions of people with sites preferred external, neutral training and support in, instead of an internal, somebody being trained up internally and delivering. They liked the independence of that. Uh, and, uh, and because of that, we made sure that uh, for our module implementation tra training that we stayed engaged with the NHSI and brought over the expertise with the long-term view of becoming uh, expert ourselves, but maybe cross-covering so that the person who's delivering the training isn't working in the organization where the project is being implemented. Um, and uh, the most important uh, thing from, from my perspective at the National Lead is that we had area coordinators, so area project managers that each site could feed into and had the phone number of and would get regular visits from uh, an area coordinator who would help them with uh, issues in relation to module implementation, issues in relation to uh, working out the metrics and the reporting and, and, and tracking your improvement data and metrics. And uh, we made sure that and, and encouraged that we had uh, robust and engaging communication in terms of uh, national uh, um, uh, media coverage, national communication strategy, and then also local, encouraging uh, all the sites to uh, uh, promote their own uh, projects within their own organizations. And in order to do this on a macro level, uh, in December 2010, January 2011, we start up, started up a national advisory group because we realized that uh, some of the evidence coming from the UK uh, w was that sometimes this thing uh, created a little bit of an IR stir, that when you mentioned lean, it meant cutting jobs. So we engaged the national nursing unions in, in a national, uh, in, in a national um, advisory group and um, we made sure we had representatives from all the major uh, um, Dublin academic teaching hospitals, university hospitals. We made sure that we had uh, all, all um, types of, and uh, the register were represented, public health nursing, mental health nursing, and general nursing, and all sat on this large national group that would meet once a quarter during the startup of the project. And um, we also included, because there were multidisciplinary national therapy leads, um, and um, we also had representatives from the HEI, the Higher Education Institute and University sector, who would sit in and help shape the project as it, as it went forward. And they helped set up the National Implementation Group, um, which are the doers. So um, uh, um, the advisor group were the thinkers, uh, and that's thinkers, not tinkers. 
uh, and uh, the National Implementation Group are the doers, and, and they were charged with uh, and mandated with uh, really, uh, uh, um, rolling out this project nationally. And then we have our pr uh, product award sites. So uh, I, I'm the chair and lead of the National Implementation Group. We meet on a monthly basis, um, and we uh, take advice in relation to um, our rollout and our projects uh, from... Uh, we also have a teapot project, the Productive uh, um, Operating Theatre project, but we also have advice and, and, and guidance from our national leadership centres, some uh, key uh, national directors of nursing, um, the national clinical programmes uh, people, our NHSI fellow Lorraine uh, sits in that group, and we also have support from a business project manager who helps us with our national um, reporting mechanisms, our national key metrics. Um, and our improvement data that we can show nationally where, where, where all sites are, are moving towards. And um, we have, eight, we, we have uh, eight area coordinators, two area coordinators per HSE area. So if you can imagine Ireland and divided in four, there's two area coordinators that manage, manage those sites. And I really can't overemphasize the importance that that role has so that um, sites, aren't, uh, sites can feel that their project team in a site can contact and have the support of somebody at a regional basis who has access to um, uh, training, who has access to uh, the National Implementation Group. And in the end, and uh, somebody asked me downstairs in relation to this, we started off these monthly national um, uh, groups talking about all the improvements that we were doing, and now we actually only just talk about the uh, sites that are having issues. So uh, most of our focus when we meet monthly is in relation to overcoming some of the obstacles in sites that are having, having issues and when we will plan our next lot of training and, and start up our regional network events. Because one of the advantages of having uh, sites reporting into a region is the learning that can take place between sites. So uh, most of the regions have had a couple of days after their training where they come together and learn from each other in terms of their implementation to date. So, and, and some very novel and innovative ideas get exchanged at those, uh, at those dates, uh, at, those, um, at those events. Um, and um, yeah, most of the area coordinators have between three and four sites uh, that report into them and that they would uh, regularly, regularly visit. Um, lots and lots of schematic diagrams, but um, so the, the, those four sites uh, are represented uh, here. We did learn from the experience of the UK, uh, and we, we, we did take all of the good things in that. You know, in the executive lead guide, there is a guide in terms of project uh, a team for each site. And in Ireland, we made sure that um, uh, obviously there was an executive lead of the steering group, who's usually the director of nursing, um, uh, but that there, were, there was a project manager in each site. And in Ireland, we're, we're, we're most of the larger hospitals would have a practice development uh, facilitator who would help with nursing practice projects, who would help with uh, innovative projects uh, and some research projects. So we made sure that person who's very experienced with change, very experienced with improvement work, and very experienced with uh, working with, with staff was the named project lead whose job it was is to enable the module work that happens at the, uh, you know, in, the, in, in most of the sites. Now, in some of the sites who don't have project practice <coughs> development um, uh, facilitators, that can be an assistant director of nursing or a, clinical, uh, a senior clinical nurse manager. Um, and um, the also, uh, some of the good stuff that we, we, we took from the executive uh, guide is the importance of the project improvement facilitator. So most of the steering groups have a very senior member of staff who's a fixer, who's a doer. And um, so if the wards are coming into issues in relation to requisitions going down and not being uh, uh, listened to, or if they're looking for money to sponsor uh, or to organize training, that there's a fixer. Uh, and uh, they're generally an assistant director of nursing who report to the steering group whose job it is is to try and enable and speed up the process so that the ward managers, who are the ward leads, uh, try and d don't get uh, too, too um, caught up in, 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 in trying to beat the system, that they have help and a buddy to, to try and get them through the system. Uh, and then we have the ward leads. The, 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 I suppose one of the, the great advantages that I, I found was having the same systematic set up in every single organization. So every organization has a steering group and they nearly all mimic and mirror each other in terms of their makeup. Um, so that if there are, is a problem, we can say who is the project facilitator, who is the project leader, and it's their job to do X, Y, and Z. So it meant articulating the project uh, and uh, articulating the key roles of the project uh, a lot easier because we knew exactly what their, what their roles should be in each of the hospitals. 
The other key element in relation to Ireland's systematic approach to, to, to productive ward is uh, we were very, very, very careful about how we chose our sites. Our initial um, uh, site selection, uh, we put out uh, expressions of interest. So w w not anybody can be a productive ward. Uh, and we introduced a readiness checklist um, so that when we did, somebody did express an interest to, be, uh, to, d to take part in this productive ward project, we met with the uh, organization, we met with the senior management team, and we went through the checklist to make sure um, that there was leadership at executive level and this just wasn't a nice or sexy thing to do, uh, that they really, really wanted it. Uh, but not just that, that when we met the director of nursing, as has been the case, um, uh, and I, I found that the directors of nursing might want it, but the team may not want it. Um, so sometimes uh, they put their hand, uh, people want to be part of a national project, and then when you go and you do the, 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 when the area coordinator goes and meets the site, they realize, well, this isn't actually, nobody's spoken to the ward about it. This is the director of nurses, nursing's idea of, of having a productive ward. So we actually had 54 initial expressions of interest, and only 17 met the criteria for phase one because we went through every single one, making sure that we had um, uh, uh, showcase wards. And, um, and uh, in practice development terms, it's called working with fertile ground. So we made sure that the sites that we worked with were fertile ground. So we made sure that there was um, a culture of continuous improvement. There was some sort of capital commitment, even though I found in most of my experience with sites to date that uh, you'll get verbal commitment uh, for, finance, for finances. But it's a little bit like uh, when my wife fills in the application form for a car. Um, she'll fill in saying yes, 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 and tick all the boxes uh, without realizing that there's actually uh, a monthly expenditure has to come with those tick boxes. So in many of the sites uh, na in nationally in Ireland, we have to keep going back and revisit and say, you did promise that you'd move that cupboard. You did promise that you'd, be, that you'd, you, that we, you'd do small pieces of capital work. And in some instances where we, they, that, that hasn't happened, in terms of leverage, because it's a national project, we've been able to secure funds elsewhere. But in terms of uh, encouraging people to feed themselves, that's a last resort. And, uh, and there's only probably two sites that have got external funding to try and do some of their improvement work. And the great uh, advantage of doing readiness audits and meeting the team before they come to site is you make sure that, the, that we're able to see that the ward manager really, really wants this. And, uh, and she's the, you know, the right people in the right place at the right time. So the, we found that the readiness audit uh, has really been key. And we've just had our uh, second lot of uh, our phase two sites uh, who have gone through the readiness audit and started their module implementation in December and have just started the project work now, and we now have um, 11 new wards and seven new sites uh, in, in phase two. Um, and where these are, and um, you've met Angela and the team from the Coombe here in Dublin Mid Leinster, um, and um, so, so geographically they're fairly well spread around the country, um, and we have um, the, the new sites actually just actually replicate, um, except there's uh, some new sites in the west, um, which populate here, um, some uh, new sites in Nina and North Tipperary, and uh, the rest are spread around the Dublin, Mid Leinster, and um, Dublin North East sites. That's the end of my project. <laughs> <laughs>